Hello viewers, in the last session we have proved the identity theorem uh, which says that uh, two functions f and g analytic functions f and g uh, which are uh, defined on an uh, on a region if they agree on a set containing a limit point then they have to be identically equal. Okay. So, that was the identity theorem. So, today uh, we are going to see some consequences of the identity theorem and uh, see some applications of these consequences. Okay. So, first in order is uh, the uniqueness theorem. So, we can state the identity theorem in a different format uh, called the uniqueness theorem. Okay. So, it says that um, uh, let G be a region and suppose that f and g are analytic functions okay, on g. Okay. Uh, suppose further suppose that f of z is equal to g of z okay, for all z belong to a certain set S where S uh, has a limit point in G okay, then uh, f of z is identically equal to G of z on uh, G. Okay. Uh, so, f of z is uh, identically equal to little g on capital G. Okay. So, this is nothing but the identity theorem in disguise we are applying uh, the identity theorem to the analytic function f minus g if f and g are analytic f minus g is analytic. So, we are just applying uh, uh, identity theorem on that function. Okay. So, there is nothing new here the uniqueness theorem. Okay. So, then uh, now uh, we are going to further analyze the zeros of the analytic function and note some consequences of the identity theorem. Okay. So, here uh, now suppose uh, f is analytic on uh, B A R on a ball of radius r with uh, with f having a 0 at the center a. Okay. Also assume that uh, and suppose that suppose f is not identically 0 on B A R, which means the 0 of f at a is isolated. Okay. So, we are sort of assuming that um, f is non 0 uh, on the whole uh, whole disk B A R. Okay. So, without loss of generality you can contract R uh, contract R to such a number uh, positive real number such that f has no other 0 in B A R. Okay. So, let us assume that uh, f is and f of z is not equal to 0 on B prime of A R. Okay. We can always assume that as long as f is not identically 0 okay, the zeros of f are isolated. So, let us now uh, notice that then f of z we saw can be written as z minus a power m uh, times phi of z, where uh, okay, where okay, firstly this is valid for for z belongs to B A R all of B A R okay, uh, where phi of a is not equal to 0. Okay. Uh, here, so f has a 0 of order m at a. Okay. So, z minus a power m we can factor out we found out okay. and then uh, the, the remaining power series okay, the, 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 when we factor out a z minus a power m where m is the order of the 0 the remaining power series is an analytic function uh, which we called as phi of z. So, we saw this form earlier. Okay. And then we also know that the leading coefficient there uh, C m uh, is non 0. So, uh, we are calling uh, we are saying that phi of a is non 0. Okay. And then uh, what we can say further is that uh, so f prime of z we can 
have a form for f prime of z this is m times z minus a power m minus 1 times phi of z plus um, plus z minus a power m times phi prime of z okay and this is valid for z belongs to b a r we are using the product rule okay and then um, since since f is not identically 0, we can also say that phi of z is not equal to 0 in B A epsilon. Now, I have contracted the disk further for phi of z not to be 0 uh, for some epsilon positive. This we know is possible by continuity of the function phi of z, this we saw uh, in the last session anyway. Okay. So, for z not equal to A and z belonging to b a epsilon, we have what do we have? We can divide f prime by f and notice something. When we divide f prime by f, what happens is um, here is an expression for a f prime. Okay. So, maybe I should use some other color. Okay. So, here is an expression for f prime and the first term uh, the first term uh, in that expression, okay, when I divide that by f of z, whose expression is above, okay, uh, what happens is the phi of z cancels. Phi of z is non-zero, okay, so phi of z cancels, and then m z minus a power m minus one cancels with z minus a power m to give me m by z minus a, okay, and likewise the second factor cancels with z z minus a power m okay, z minus a power m cancels with z minus a power m to give me phi prime of z by phi of z. Okay. So, for z not equal to a we have this uh, expression. Okay. In particular if c epsilon not is a contour whose trace is a circle of radius epsilon naught, where epsilon greater than epsilon naught greater than 0. Okay. Uh, so, epsilon is between epsilon naught is in between epsilon and 0 okay. uh, and with center. So, this is a circle of radius epsilon naught okay, uh, with, with center A okay, uh, oriented in the positive direction. Okay. Then, we know that the integral of the left hand side, okay, I'll, okay, integral of the left hand side on C epsilon naught f prime of z by f of z, the contour integral of that on C epsilon naught exists. Okay. Firstly, because f is non-zero on any point on this on the trace of C epsilon naught okay. and this is equal to the integration the contour integration of m by z minus a d z plus the contour integration of phi prime of z by phi of z uh, on c epsilon. Notice that the first integrand on the right hand side is the fundamental integral it is a multiple of the fundamental integral 1 by z minus a. Okay. And the second integral is the integral I forgot a d z there. Uh, integral of uh, of an analytic function. Notice phi of z is never zero on B A uh, epsilon. Okay, so in particular, it is uh, non-zero on and inside this contour C epsilon naught. Okay, so uh, and also phi prime is analytic since phi is analytic. So phi prime by phi is analytic uh, on and inside C epsilon naught. So the second integral. Uh, vanishes. So, this is 0 okay. and then uh, what we have is um, uh, what we have is integral uh, c epsilon naught uh, f prime of z by f of z uh, d z or more tersely if I divide this by 2 pi i, 
uh, what I get on the right hand side is simply m. Okay. So, the order of this 0 is captured by this kind of integral uh, which sometimes is called logarithmic uh, integral. Okay. So, the integral of f prime by f uh, modulo a constant namely 1 by 2 pi i gives me the number of zeros of f inside this little disk okay, or uh, you know counting its multiplicity. So, m is actually the multiplicity of the 0. So, we can call them as m zeros at a. Okay. So, likewise the, we can generalize this if the function if, if a function f is analytic on a certain region okay, or on a certain uh, disk and if it has uh, you know more than a uh, few zeros inside inside or maybe uh, none of them okay, then a certain integral will actually capture the number of zeros of f inside that contour. Okay. So, here is the more general form. So, here is a theorem. Okay, uh, more generally uh, counting zeros. Let f be analytic inside and on a positively oriented contour. gamma. Okay. Let uh, uh, so, that is a simple closed contour. Okay. So, uh, let f be uh, a non zero let f be non zero uh, on gamma on the trace of gamma gamma star okay, and have capital N number of zeros. Okay, uh, inside gamma, inside gamma. Okay, including multiplicity. Of zeros. Okay, then the conclusion is then. Uh, this integral 1 by 2 pi i times integration the contour integration on gamma of f prime of z by f of z d z is actually equal to uh, will capture this number capital N. Okay. All right. So, what is the proof? Here is the proof. The function f prime by f is analytic inside and on uh, gamma except at the zeros of f okay, lying inside gamma except at those points it is analytic uh, everywhere else uh, inside this on and inside gamma. Okay. So, suppose there are zeros Okay. Uh, suppose uh, the zeros are a one, so on until a p or a yeah, a p. So there are n zeros. So let me say yeah, a little n. Okay. Uh, of orders m 1 through m n. So, there are a 1 through a n zeros of uh, orders m 1 through m n uh, inside gamma. Okay. So, uh, we are assuming that f has no zeros on the trace of gamma itself. Okay. So, we can find since the inside of gamma is an open uh, set, we can find uh, disjoint uh, open disks uh, B A K R K K equals 1 through n okay, such that there is a function. f 
phi k for each of these case, uh, which is analytic and non zero on this set P uh, A k R k. So, essentially I am just uh, redoing what I have done here, uh, allow me to go back. Okay. So, I am just redoing what I have done here uh, or here. Okay. So, I am uh, considering this function phi for each of those zeros. Okay. I am considering this kind of factorization and I am considering that function phi, I am called indexing them by k. Okay. So, there is a function phi k which is analytic and non-zero in B A k R k and such that f of z is z minus a k power m k times phi k of z for z belong to z belonging to b of a k r k. So, this is true locally or in a small neighborhood of these zeros uh, a k. Okay. So, this is essentially what we have done earlier. Okay. So, we are f locating small disks uh, in which we can uh, find these functions phi k. Now, the trick is to actually join all these uh, together. Okay. So, what we will do is we will define. Okay. So, then firstly uh, on the disk itself on the little disk itself f prime of z by f of z like we have done earlier is m k divided by z minus a k plus phi k prime of z divided by phi k of z. Okay. Z belongs to uh, b prime of a k r k. Okay. So, this is true locally. Now, the trick is to define the function capital F of z. Okay. We define capital F of z to be f prime of z by f of z minus the summation j equals 1 through n of m j by uh, z minus a j. Okay. And um, if this is for uh, z not belonging to any of these disks. So, outside the union of these little disks that we found union of b a k r k k equals 1 through n. So, outside of this disks uh, we define capital F to be f prime by f minus the uh, summation of m j by z minus a j. Okay. And uh, we define this to be uh, phi k prime by phi k of z minus sigma j equals 1 or I should write 1 less than or equal to j less than or equal to little n uh, j not equal to k. Okay. So, we are uh, when j equals k we are absorbing the m j minus z m j divided by z minus a j into here. Okay. Notice that f prime by f minus m k by z minus a k from this expression here will give you phi k prime by phi k. Okay. So, uh, phi k prime by phi k uh, minus the sum of the remaining uh, m j by z minus a j. Okay. If z belongs to uh, b a k r k, okay. k equals 1 through n. Okay. So, by doing so we are uh, making capital F okay, uh, the definition of capital F continuous on the boundary of this B A K R K this disks B A K R K. Okay. So, the definitions match up and, uh, and hence um, this function capital F uh, you could say uh, well by uh, identity theorem okay, uh, uh, capital F is analytic. The definition of capital F, um, you know, on the boundary uh, of any B A K R K agrees with uh, this function here. Okay, this function here. Okay, and inside B A K R K, this is analytic. 
okay. and outside of the union of B A K R case uh, this function this other portion of capital F is analytic. Okay. So, um, F is analytic, okay. F is analytic. So, um, and then now the conclusion follows by. Uh, so, now uh, integral f, what I should say is now integral of gamma of f of z dz is 0 by Cauchy's theorem. Okay. And since we are out, you know, outside of all these disks. Uh, capital F has this definition integral over gamma i e integral over gamma of f prime of z divided by f of z dz minus uh, you know sigma m j. So, the integral uh, j equals 1 through n of m j by z minus a j uh, dz is equal to zero. The integration on gamma. Okay, so um, so integration over gamma f prime of z by f of z dz is equal to uh, the summation of. So I, if I divide everything by one by two pi i. Okay, so what I get is the summation m j. Okay, so summation m j is nothing but your capital. N. Okay, since summation j equals 1 through n, when you add the orders of zeros of all the zeros of f uh, inside gamma, we agreed that that is the number capital N. Okay. So, this is equal to capital N. So, that completes the proof of this theorem. Okay. So, uh, so that is a way to count the zeros of f uh, inside a contour uh, gamma. Okay. Uh, we are going to put this uh, counting zeros theorem to use and uh, prove the following uh, important result and useful result uh, Roche's theorem. Let f here is a statement let f and g be uh, analytic inside okay, and on uh, a contour gamma simple closed contour gamma okay and suppose that modulus of f of z is strictly greater than modulus of g of z uh, on on the trace of gamma okay then f and f plus g okay have the same number of zeros inside gamma. Once again note that here we count zeros including multiplicity. So, uh, when we uh, include multiplicity uh, f and f plus g will have the same number of zeros. Okay. So, um, let t belong to 0 1. So, for any uh, t in this inter unit interval okay, uh, since modulus of f of z is strictly greater than modulus of g of z on uh, gamma star. Okay. What we can do is uh, we, okay, we can say f plus t times g of z is not equal to 0 uh, for z belongs to gamma star. Okay. This uh, follows from uh, a certain kind of uh, triangle inequality. Well, if Okay, so, from this modulus we can say that uh, modulus of f plus t g is never equal to 0. So, f plus t g itself is never equal to 0 on z belongs to gamma star. Okay. So, that is easy to see. Okay. So, then uh, the function we will define a function uh, phi of uh, t. is equal to 1 by 2 pi i. Well, we will orient gamma positively. Okay. So, orient 
gamma positively. It does not hurt if it is uh, oriented otherwise, okay. but nevertheless we can orient gamma positively. Uh, phi of t is 1 by 2 pi i integration over gamma uh, f prime plus t g prime okay, of z. So, it is the derivative of f plus t g divided by f plus t g of z d z. This we know counts the zeros of the function f plus t g uh, inside uh, the contour gamma. Okay. So, um, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to claim that uh, phi is a continuous function, okay. but before that uh, notice the following. Okay. So, note uh, phi of t okay, firstly is uh, the number of zeros of uh, number of zeros of f plus t g inside gamma okay and and so so phi is integral value number of zeros so it has to be integral value if phi is continuous if we show that this is continuous okay then uh, phi must be a constant function okay and what is of interest is the value of phi of at 0 okay phi of 0 is the i mean t is equal to 0 gives us f prime by f as the integrand phi of 0 is the number of zeros of f inside inside gamma okay and phi of 1 is okay t equals 1 gives us f prime plus g prime by f plus g in the integrand uh, here okay so um, so, phi of 1 is the number of zeros, okay, zeros of f plus g inside gamma. So, if phi is continuous and phi is a constant, then phi of 0 is equal to phi of 1 and so the number of zeros of f will be equal to number of zeros of 1. Okay. So, all the hard work is actually inside uh, proving that uh, phi is actually a continuous function. Okay. So, um, here is here is how we prove that phi is continuous. Okay. So, phi is continuous is a uh, proof. Okay. So, fix t okay. then um, phi of t minus phi of s. What is this? By definition, this is t minus s divided by uh, 2 pi i times integration over gamma of g prime f minus f prime g of z divided by f plus t g of z times f plus t s g of z. Okay. So, this is obtained by uh, you know clearing uh, denominator and etcetera. Okay. So, um, I mean writing expressions for phi of t and phi of s and clearing the denominators. Okay. So, now uh, we note the following uh, there are positive constants capital M and little m such that for all z belongs to uh, gamma star okay, uh, modulus of g prime f minus f prime g is less than or equal to m. Okay, that is the, the extreme value theorem which says that a function continuous function attains 
uh, its maximum. Okay. Uh, so, there is a constant uh, m such that uh, this is bounded this f prime g g prime f minus f prime g in modulus is bounded okay, and uh, g prime of uh, sorry g of z likewise is a function which is bounded it is continuous. So, we are picking the maximum of them. So, uh, a single capital M works okay. also and modulus of f plus t g we know that this is never 0 the function f plus t g is never 0 on the uh, a trace of gamma. So, this has to be have a minimum by uh, extreme value of theorem once again. Okay. So, the modulus of this function is greater than or equal to uh, m on gamma star. Okay. So, uh, then by once again a form of a triangle inequality the modulus of f plus s g of z okay, which is equal to modulus of f plus t g of z plus t minus or uh, s minus t uh, g of z. Okay. This is greater than or equal to uh, modulus of f plus t g of z uh, minus modulus of s minus t times modulus of g of z okay, by triangle inequality. Okay. And this is greater than or equal to well uh, this is greater than or equal to half times little m if modulus of s minus t is chosen to be less than or equal to m by 2 m. Okay. If modulus of s minus t is less than or equal to m by 2 m this quantity is less than or equal to m by 2 m. Uh, so, um, this times this is less than or equal to this times g of z in modulus is less than or equal to uh, uh, m by 2. Okay. So, when we subtract uh, something which is at least m uh, or we subtract m by 2 from something which is at least m, we have something which is at least half m. Okay. So, that is easy to see. Okay. So, um, hence for uh, modulus of s minus t is sufficiently small, small enough what we have is uh, phi of s minus phi of t in modulus okay, is less than or equal to uh, modulus of t minus s uh, times capital M by pi m. I am using this expression here, okay, this particular expression here. Okay. So, uh, g prime f minus f prime g is less than or equal to the numerator is less than or equal to uh, little m uh, capital M sorry okay. and then uh, in the denominator we have proved that this is at least little m and this is at least half m okay. and uh, okay. so in summary what we have is um, this is less than or equal to modulus of t minus s by uh, 2 pi times uh, capital M by uh, uh, m times half m. Okay. So, the 2 and 2 cancel I have pi m in the uh, denominator. Okay. So, uh, I apologize this should be pi m squared. Okay. So, I will say that should be pi m squared okay. and then um, and then I have times of course, the length of gamma itself of the contour gamma. Okay. So, all these are constants the point is all these are constants and so, I can say that uh, phi of s uh, or phi of t or phi is continuous at the point t. Okay. So, uh, so, phi is continuous. Okay. So, that completes the proof of uh, Roche's theorem. We can apply uh, Roche's theorem to for example, count uh, zeros of some functions okay, uh, to locate zeros of some functions. Here is an example. Okay. So, uh, so, consider the function 2 plus z squared minus e power i z. 
Okay. The zeros of this function f of z is this, well it is an entire function. The zeros of this function are precisely the, uh, the solutions to the equation e power i z is equal to uh, z squared plus 2. So, we are trying to locate the solutions uh, to this equation. Okay. So, in the upper half plane we will show that there is precisely 1 0. Okay. We will show that there is precisely one solution okay, uh, or I will say one uh, 0 of f in the upper half plane. Okay. So, how do we do that? We use Ruscha's theorem. We will uh, uh, let. So, I will change the name of. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't matter. Okay. So, let f1 of z equal 2 plus z square, and let g1 of z is equal to e power i z, or minus e power i z. So, that the sum will give me uh, f. Okay. So, f 1 plus g 1 of z is f of z. Okay. So, um, if we consider the following contour, the uh, we will exercise care in uh, selecting a contour. Okay. So, if we take a contour like that. Okay. So, it is this portion of real line starting from minus r to r and then uh, we will take a contour uh, a semicircle okay of radius capital r okay so if we consider this contour so we go from minus r to r on the real line and then along this uh, along this uh, semicircle okay uh, then um, what we have is modulus of f1 of z Okay, on on this real line on the interval minus r to r that is a that is a notation for uh, the complex numbers on the real line from minus r to r. Uh, we know that modulus of f 1 of z is modulus of 2 plus z squared well that is at least 2 okay. and because uh, yeah, so that is at least two, and this is uh, strictly greater than uh, one, which is the modulus of g one of z. Modulus of g one of z on on real line is uh, essentially uh, one because modulus of e power i uh, z for z real number, okay, is uh, one. Okay, we know that for any real number uh, z, it is one. Uh, so, in particular for numbers between minus r and r, uh, real numbers between minus r and r, modulus of g 1 of z is 1. Okay. So, on minus r r on this piece, uh, modulus of f 1 of z is greater than modulus of g 1 of z, strictly greater that is important. Okay. And also, on uh, the circle r e power i theta, okay, theta from minus I should say from 0 to pi okay, theta from 0 to pi on r e power i theta. What is the modulus of f 1 of z? Modulus of f 1 of z uh, is well uh, z could be uh, opposite to 2. Okay, so, in the negative direction. So, uh, the modulus of this is at least uh, r squared minus 2 right modulus of 2 plus z squared uh, for any r e power i theta okay uh, this can be uh, at least this has to be at least r squared minus 2 okay, in the worst case okay and then this is strictly greater than 1 okay and um, 1 is greater than or equal to uh, e power minus r sin theta which is the modulus of g of z okay so well g 1 of g 1 of z. Okay. So, g 1 of z notice is uh, minus e raise to i z. So, if I write z as x plus uh, 
uh, i y okay, uh, or or at least when z equals r e power i theta what I have is uh, i times r cos theta plus i r sin theta. Okay. So, this gives me minus e raise to i uh, or minus r sin theta plus i r cos theta. So, the modulus of g 1 of z on uh, the contour r e power i theta will give me its real part namely e power minus r sin theta. Okay. Whatever that is when r is uh, greater than uh, r is greater than 1 at least okay, or for any r this is uh, less than 1 less than or equal to 1 okay, for r sin theta positive. Okay. So, this gives me modulus of g of z and uh, notice this inequality is true only if r is greater than uh, let us say uh, root 3. Okay. So, I, I wrote this in a haste actually r squared minus 2 is greater than 1 only if r is greater than uh, some number okay. r is greater than root 3. Okay. So, uh, of course, we can keep this contour high enough okay we can choose r as big as we like so we can choose r to be at least root 3 okay and then that will give us modulus of f1 of z is strictly greater than modulus of g1 of z okay on r e power i theta as well okay so in summary uh, uh, modulus of f1 of z is greater than modulus of g1 of z on all of this contour so we can conclude by rouche's theorem that by rouche's theorem Okay. The uh, number of zeros of f 1 of z is equal to the number of zeros of uh, f 1 plus g 1 which is f of z okay, of f of z inside gamma okay, inside gamma. So, we can take gamma as large as we like. So, we can increase r as much as we like. Okay. So, uh, making r tend to infinity uh, since we know that f 1 of z has only 1 0 namely minus root to i or plus root to i okay. 1 0 in uh, the upper half plane uh, f of z also as only 1 0 in the UHP. So, you let r tend to infinity and make this conclusion. Okay. So, we can count zeros uh, common zeros using Rouche's theorem. Okay. So, uh, next uh, we will consider some uh, applications of Rouche's theorem. Okay. Um, in particular, uh, we will see uh, maximum modulus theorem and uh, and use it to prove uh, the open mapping theorem for analytic functions for non constant analytic functions okay so um, in that line first what i want to do is i want to consider a local version of the maximum modulus theorem so here is a local maximum modulus theorem Okay. Suppose that uh, f is analytic on a ball of radius r around a okay. and that modulus of f of z is less than or equal to modulus of f of a for all z belongs to b a r. Okay, which means the uh, the function f is such that the modulus of f is largest at its center. Okay, then um, then it has to be that f is a constant function on B A R. 
So, in particular this is telling you or the converse of this is uh, contrapositive of this tells that if f is not a constant function then it cannot have a, a maximum modulus at its center. Okay. So, here is a proof of this fact. Okay. So, uh, so, firstly we want a, a, a little r okay, or r naught fix r naught with 0 strictly less than r naught strictly less than r okay, by um, Cauchy's integral formula. Okay, by uh, Cauchy's integral formula, we know that f of a the value of f at the center is 1 by 2 pi i um, integration over uh, c r naught where c is a c r naught is a circle of radius r naught uh, centered at a okay, of f of z divided by z minus c a d z. Okay. Uh, c r naught is a circle of radius r naught centered at a okay, oriented positively that we know from Cauchy's integral formula. Okay. So, it is a simple circle there and then this is 1 by 2 pi i. Okay. This can be written as 1 by 2 pi i. We will parameterize this circle. So, we, uh, we get 0 to 2 pi f of a plus r e power i theta times i r e power i theta d theta. Okay. This is the d z and then in the denominator we have z minus a which is uh, r e power i theta z is a plus r e power i theta that is the parameterization okay, theta from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so, this is d z this little piece is d z and then we have that. So, this is equal to 1 by 2 pi i or uh, now 1 by 2 pi times integral 0 to 2 pi after cancellation this you have f of a plus r e power i theta times uh, uh, times d theta okay, after all the cancellations. Now, uh, from using the hypothesis that uh, modulus of f of z is less than or equal to modulus of f of a, modulus of f of a firstly from this formula has to be less than or equal to 1 by 2 pi integral 0 to 2 pi modulus of f of a plus r e power i theta. Okay. That is from uh, that is from this okay. f of a equals this okay. and then uh, and then by hypothesis we have this is less than or equal to uh, modulus of f of a. Okay. That is because uh, well, this is modulus of f of a plus r e power i theta is modulus of f of z for some z on the circle. So, that I am writing is less than or equal to modulus of f of a. f of a is a constant the integration from 0 to 2 pi of uh, d theta will give me 2 pi 2 pi 2 pi cancel to give me this modulus of f of a. Okay. So, we have this inequality. Okay. So, um, uh, integral 0 to 2 pi uh, of modulus of f of a okay, uh, minus modulus of f of a plus r e power i theta is d theta is 0. Okay. From this we can conclude that this integral is 0. Also, since modulus of f of a is constantly greater than or equal to modulus of f of a plus r e power i theta, the integrand is non negative. When we have a non negative integrand and then its integral is 0, uh, uh, we get that. So, we can conclude conclude that the integrand itself modulus of okay, is uh, identically 0. So, um, f of a is equal to modulus of f of a plus r e power i theta for uh, theta.
okay, for uh, any theta. Now, this is true for uh, any r less than r naught less than r. Okay. So, this is true for any r naught such that 0 less than r naught strictly less than r. Okay. So, we conclude that so, uh, so uh, modulus of f is constant. it has to be constant on the whole disk B A R. Okay. So, uh, f itself and we know that an analytic function if its modulus is constant, then the function itself is constant. So, f itself is a constant. Okay. And that was an exercise uh, way back uh, using Cauchy Riemann equations. So, when the modulus is constant, the function itself is a constant and that proves the, proves the local version of uh, this maximum modulus theorem, which says that a function non constant analytic function cannot have uh, uh, a maximum uh, at the center of the of a disk of analyticity. Okay. So, uh, we will use this and Roche's theorem uh, to proceed further uh, and uh, prove one of the important uh, results namely the open mapping theorem for non constant analytic functions okay so i'll stop here